Hi, everyone, and welcome to our presentation on simplifying AI infrastructure with Kubernetes operators. We're so excited to be here today. I'm Ganesh Kumar, and I'm a software engineer on the Azure Kubernetes service team. AKS is a managed Kubernetes platform to make it easier to run Kubernetes workloads on Azure. I particularly work on GPU management in Kubernetes and also improving pod startup times. With me is Tarek. Hey, everyone. I'm Tarek, and I work at NVIDIA, and I work at the Cloud Native Technologies team. Uh, here at the Cloud Native Technologies, we work on tooling and software that enable users to use GPUs on Cloud Native environments like Kubernetes and containers. And I'm also the maintainer of the GPU operator GitHub um, project. In today's talk, we'll go over why Kubernetes is useful for AI ML workloads, give a high-level overview of the ML deployment stack. Then we'll talk in detail about GPU management in Kubernetes, how it's typically done today. We'll share about Kubernetes operators and why you should use operators for GPU management, and then talk about many of the details and features of GPU operators. Then we'll share about the ML application layer and how you could fine-tune uh, workloads and run various kinds of ML workloads with operators, and we'll show a demo which combines these two operators together. So why would you use Kubernetes for AI ML? You start off with the support for scalability. Kubernetes has many features to be able to scale up and down your workloads based on demand. Uh, for instance, if your inference workload increases significantly, then Kubernetes has features to improve uh, scalability there. Then in terms of fault tolerant, Kubernetes has uh, many built-in components for self-healing capabilities, which are particularly useful uh, for GPU workloads. One of the cool features of Kubernetes is that it's very extensible. You can extend it through the custom resource definition, and that enables a broad ecosystem of tools that have been developed to make it easier to run AI ML workloads. At a high level, you have the ML application uh, that can be written in PyTorch or TensorFlow. Then you have a deployment orchestration layer, which is almost subdivided into two layers, where you have tools like Kubray Operator or Kaito, which run on top of Kubernetes. And then you have the GPU configuration layer below that. Uh, and then you finally have nodes and the operating system, which are either managed by the cloud provider or your on-prem infra team. In this section, we'll focus on GPU management. And to start off with, we will need the device drivers to be installed. Then we need to have runtime handlers on the nodes for GPUs. And then finally, we'd need to advertise the GPUs to the kubelet so that uh, the pods with that request GPU resources can be scheduled appropriately. And once all of these components are configured, you can uh, see when you describe a node that there are GPU resources available when applicable. So how is this currently done today? Typically, teams would create machine images of provisioning scripts to install host-level components. That includes the driver and the container toolkit, which is the runtime handler for GPUs. Then users would end up deploying Helm charts or YAML manifests for the Kubernetes-level components, like the device plugin, or the DCGM exporter and other components as needed. The advantage of managing it in this way is that machine images are a very standardized way to support uh, development of, uh, of drivers and provisioning of drivers. And then even if you're on-prem and manage these images, you can use tools like Ansible or Packer to easily build these images. Cloud providers also have their own scripts to do this, and this AKS GPU repo is one of the repos that I work on where we manage this driver configuration. And there's extensive testing done by the cloud provider or the on-prem teams usually before these certified machine images are deployed. But the challenge with this approach is that from the end user perspective, changing the default driver version can be hard. The upgrades also typically need upgrades to your 
uh, machine images themselves, and that can be quite complex and time consuming. You also need to maintain separate images for GPU nodes in certain cases, and that adds complexity for smaller teams. Now, Tarek will share more about some of the day two challenges with this. Thanks, Kanish. So, yep, yeah, I'll be going into detail on the day two uh, challenges when managing uh, GPUs on Kates. Now, just to clarify, day two operations are um, operations that you perform typically after deployment. So that could include like a reconfiguration, upgrades, updates, migrations, etc. Now, with the machine image approach, something that inevitably ends up happening is that you have nodes with different versions, bootstraps with different versions of machine images. And as a result, you have different sets of drivers and toolkits uh, spread across uh, various nodes in your cluster. So what happens is cluster admins, when they have to perform maintenance and driver upgrades, they have to handle each and every node individually and make sure all the driver, um, the nodes are up to date. So this becomes harder to scale and it also requires a lot of manual intervention and extremely error prone. Secondly, let's look at GPU driver upgrades. Now in the case where you want to go um, in uh, upgrade drivers of nodes in place, these are um, the steps that you have to keep in mind when executing a GPU driver upgrade that is clean and uh, free of errors. So as you can see in the flowchart, you first ensure that there are no running workloads on the, um, the node so that the GPU driver isn't, is not in use. Then after that, you deploy any of the, uh, you disable any of the GPU case components like the device plugin because they depend on the driver and the toolkit. Then after that, you unload the driver modules, then you, ca you cordon the node so that you don't have any um, ML workloads being scheduled on that node where you intend to run the driver upgrades. Now you install the uh, new GPU driver, you re-enable the Kates components so that they're, they're redeployed on top of the new driver setup, then you uncordon the node, and then you have your new GPU node with the driver and it's ready to accept new workloads. So as you can see, it's, very, it's a very involved process. You have to make sure it's done in the right order, and then it's, um, the driver upgrade is successful. Now, this, this becomes harder to manage when you do this at scale. Another common challenge that we run into is node level configuration. And what I mean by this is uh, persisting no, per node configurations and one common area where this is applied is um, multi-instance GPU and time sharing configurations. Now let's say uh, you have a huge cluster and on some of the clusters you want to enable MIG mode or time slicing or you want to enable vGPUs. Uh, this is to ensure that your GPUs are shared well enough, it's utilized and it, it's, there's proper utilization in the multi-tenant environment. So one, one thing that cluster admins have to keep keep in mind is that when they uh, perform driver upgrades or node reboots or node re-imaging, you have to make sure um, the node level configuration also has to persist across these day two operations. So uh, again, this is another added over operational overhead for DevOps and um, cluster admins. So I've gone over all of these operational uh, challenges and we can see that there is like a need for automation, a consistent approach so that all of these operational knowledge can be codified and um, we can automate this and so that this is uh, executable in, in a large scale. And um, oh yeah, and let's, all, let's not forget the um, DCGM exporter. So when it comes to large clusters, monitoring observability in a, is another important aspect for operational success. So you, you want uh, the ability to collect health, diagnostics, and usage data. You want to be able to integrate like the GPU metrics, the telemetry into cloud native systems like Prometheus. You want alerting to on unhealthy GPUs to facilitate um, remediation. So for all of these um, operational challenges, you, you want automation. And what better way than to use the strengths of Kubernetes to achieve this um, automation at large scales? 
So this is where um, Kubernetes operators come in, because Kubernetes operators were created for this very purpose. You, you can leverage the Kubernetes strengths to solve op um, operational challenges so that it's automatable and you follow a consistent approach, the, the API-driven approach that Kubernetes uh, promotes. So what are operators? Operators, simply put, are nothing but software extensions. They use custom resource uh, to manage um, the life cycle of applications. The, they're used to automate day one and day two operations uh, it, ta um, it takes to manage an application. So this is a diagram that goes over, like provides a high level overview of what an operator is. So there are two critical components for an operator. You have the custom resource and then you have the, the controller. So the custom resource is um, the Kubernetes feature where you can extend um, Kubernetes API to represent a, a desired state and configuration in, um, a, in a domain that is specific to the problem you're trying to solve. The controller is something that will watch changes to the custom resources. The controller will have the operational logic, the operational knowledge codified in it as business logic, and then the, 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 the controller will ensure that the desired state expressed in the custom resource is reflected in the cluster. So yeah, so to recap, why use operators? So we extend the Kubernetes functionality to solve domain-specific problems. So just to put it in perspective, like when it comes to deploying applications, you know that you use um, deployments, uh, daemon sets, cluster roles, and all the other Kubernetes YAML manifests it takes to deploy that outset application on Kubernetes. With operators, you can abstract all of that detail away so, so that you only expose the adjustments and configurations that are specific to the problem that you're trying to solve. So um, effective operators provide abstractions so that it enables the users of the operator to solve the problems at hand. Another advantage of operators is that now we have a broad ecosystem of operator frameworks and catalogs. If one wants to develop their own operator, you can use um, software like Cube Builder, Operator SDK, and they will generate the scaffolding for you, and all you need to do is um, develop your um, business logic, and then your operator's up and running. And you, you also have uh, rich catalogs where there are already operators built to solve problems that you're trying to so, um, uh, find, sorry, the problems that you're trying to solve, and you can already reuse operators that are out there. So let's look at um, how Kubernetes operators can help in the AI ML space. So in, uh, the GPU operator is, is one such example where we built this operator to um, codify like all the operational knowledge it takes to efficiently maintain uh, software components for um, enabling GPU usage on Kubernetes. So as you can see here, this diagram ex you know, exemplifies uh, how um, an operator will simplify uh, the installation and the lifecycle management of all the software components it takes for, um, to get GPUs um, usable on Kubernetes. So on the left side, you see that without the GPU operator, users would typically use like the machine images, which packages in the toolkit and the driver. And then to layer the, the other components, you'd use standalone Helm charts or YAML manifests. And then so you use multiple tools to make sure like your, your GPU, uh, your Kubernetes cluster is GPU ready. Whereas for the GPU operator, you have uh, one tool, one application that is managing it all for you. It does it all for you from deployment to um, upgrade and migration updates. So let's look at the anatomy of um, the GPU operator. So as I said before, an operators have the custom resource and the controllers. So in the case of GPU operator, you have two uh, custom resources, the cluster policy and the NVIDIA driver. And you have the controllers the co for the cluster policy and the NVIDIA driver custom resources, and then you have the upgrade controller. So let's look at the cluster policy API. So the cluster policy custom resource is basically a representation of the GPU software stack that you want to um, deploy on your cluster. So the advantage is that you can focus on the components that you want to deploy, the component versions and the configs pertaining to that component, 
and then the GPU operator will recognize that as the desired state that you want to apply cluster-wide. Another aspect of the custom resource is the status field. The status field helps you keep track of how, um, you know, how far along it has gone when it comes to applying the desired state. So as you, you can see over here, the status set that it's, it's ready, that the, the expressed configuration to custom policy has been applied. The other custom resource is the NVIDIA driver API. So this is a relatively new API that we've introduced. With the NVIDIA driver, we have the ability to deploy multiple driver versions. Now, while it is possible to deploy uh, the GPU driver with the cost of policy, there's a limitation in that you can only deploy one driver version or one driver configuration cluster-wide. There are cases where you want to deploy multiple driver versions or multiple driver configuration sets, and the NVIDIA driver API makes this possible. So if you can see here, you have two NVIDIA drivers, which makes use of the node selector to target a certain node pool, and then you can apply your desired driver configuration on that node pool. So on the left side, you see that you have an NVIDIA driver which targets the Azure T4 instances, and it deploys the R550 drivers on there. On the right-hand side, you have a node selector, the NVIDIA driver with the node selector pointing to the V100 instance instances, and then you're deploying the 535 drivers. Now let's go into some of the uh, core components that are packaged into the GPU operator. So one of the, more, um, one of the most popular uses of the GPU operators for the GPU driver container. For the GPU driver container, you have the install logic of the driver packaged into the container. So basically, you, get, you leverage the benefits of the container when deploying the GPU operator. So this makes it um, easy to deploy, it gives you reproducibility, and it also makes it conducive to perform um, automated upgrades. Like uh, all the operations that I went over when it comes to in, dry, updating GPU drivers in place in a node, that can be done with the help of the driver container, driver container and the upgrade controller. The next is the MIG manager. This is the component that enables you to, um, <coughs> to enable multi-instance GPUs on your node. So multi-instance GPU is a feature on some of the um, NVIDIA GPUs where you can divide your GPU into f smaller physical slices so that, so that you can enable GPU sharing where the isolation happens at the hardware level. So what the MIG manager is very good at is you can apply um, by way of node label uh, a desired MIG configuration on one of your nodes. And what the MIG, uh, MIG manager will then do is it will persist that node level configuration the next time you perform a driver upgrade and you need that MIG mode and MIG configuration restored on that node. The next is a GPU feature discovery. So th uh, this is another daemon set that basically uh, probes the GPU that is de deployed on your um, node and then exposes the GPU details as la node labels. So let's see how a GPU feature discovery could be useful. So let's say you have a cluster with multiple GPUs, and you know you, um, you have a training job, and you want to make sure you want to target the training job to a powerful GPU like the A100. Now, how do, how do you make this possible? Because with the NVIDIA device plugin, you're only exposing the GPU count. But with the GPU feature discovery, however, you can use node labels wherein you can, t uh, you can have your ML um, training job use node selectors to target the specific A100 instance, and then it'll make sure that your ML training jobs will be only deployed on the A100 GPUs. So now let's go with the GPU operator, like end-to-end, -end, like what it does. This is what happens when you um, Helm install uh, the GPU operator. So the first component that runs is the node feature discovery. So node feature discovery is another component, like a, an open source project that we import. And the, GP, uh, the GPU operator runs this as a daemon set, and the node feature discovery probes the, the node and exposes the relevant features as labels. In the case of GPU operator, what we want is the PCI label that uh, confirms that the NVIDIA GPU is present. So once the GPU detects this label generated by node feature discovery, GPU operator will know to deploy the GPU, um, the GPU driver and the other components on that GPU node. So once it does that, it deploys the, um, the NVIDIA driver, and then it validates the driver install, 
And that's when you know you can proceed to deploying the toolkit. And then once the toolkit is deployed, then you run another round of validation. And then once the toolkit is validated, you're clear to deploy the rest of the components, like the Kate's device plugin, the make manager, the GPU feature discovery, and the DCGM exporter. And then once all of these components are deployed, you have another final round of validation that um, makes sure that all the components are up and running. And that's when you know your node is ready to accept GPU workloads. As you can see here, the GPU operator has, uh, has automated a lot of tasks that would normally be done by cluster admins. Like they would deploy these components, r run the validations, and then ensure, uh, and then um, open up the G uh, node to ex for GPU workloads. So you can see here that the GPU operator does it all for you, and this is a model that will scale. So over to Ganesh for fine tuning LLMs operators. Thanks, Sarek. Now we figured out how to get GPUs up and running and configured with the GPU operator. It's time to look at the application side. Here we're looking at fine tuning as the application uh, for this demo. For fine tuning, there's four main components that you can think of uh, from a high level. Uh, first is the pre-trained model. It could be something like a llama model or phi models and then you'd want to know the data set that you're gonna fine tune with. Uh, for instance, you'd want to fine tune a language model to have knowledge about medical data sets, and uh, that would, you'd pick the appropriate data set for that. Then you'd have to write the code for the training loop, so this would involve uh, figuring out the hyperparameters and picking the right algorithms for training or fine tuning. And then finally, you'd need to think about what GPU nodes you need, what type of resources are needed per GPU node, and how many GPU nodes are needed, and then also write some code for parallelization if needed. There's different ways of doing this, but today operators have almost become a standardized way for deploying machine learning applications on Kubernetes. Kubray and KServ are operators where you could use uh, distributed computing for inference and fine tuning and even other types of distributed compute uh, with the operator framework. And it has integrations with many uh, ML frameworks in the ecosystem. The Kubernetes AI toolchain operator is a very easy to use operator for inference and fine tuning workloads. Uh, this is an open source operator, uh, which is open sourced by Azure. And we'll be using that today to see how to deploy a fine tuning workload. This is a high-level architecture diagram of Kaito. Uh, you have two CRDs, the workspace CRD and the node provisioner CRD. And both the node provisioner CRD is optional, and today uh, we'll be replacing that part with uh, the nodes which are managed by AKS node pools and the GPU operator. The workspace operator, a workspace CRD is mainly looking at uh, making sure that your inference and fine-tuning workloads are configured properly and shows the various statuses for them. And Kaito also has a set of predefined uh, LLMs which are commonly used, like the Llama models, which, and, which are pushed to the registry, and those will be fetched during runtime as needed. And it's also configurable to add other models. So for the demo, we're gonna have uh, four layers of the stack. Uh, first, we'll start off with the training code, which is written in PyTorch. Then that's packaged as part of Kaito as well. And that has code for uh, picking up the fine-tuning config and deploying it on Kubernetes. We'll also have the GPUs completely managed by the GPU operator. And then that's going to be running on Azure Kubernetes service. These steps can be changed, but the main goal we want to show is how operators come together to make it simpler. So in this demo, I'm starting by creating a Kubernetes cluster on AKS. We are going to see um, nodes come up with the CPU nodes. These are for running system pods. Then I'm, I'm creating a node pool uh, with just one A100 GPU, and I'm skipping the driver installation so that the GPU operator manages uh, the driver configuration. 
then I'm going to be describing the A100 node. And we'll see that there is nothing in this which says that there is a GPU configured. Um, so there's no GPU allocatable there. And then when you also grep for the GPU, you see that it's not present in, in the spec. Now we are installing the GPU operator to configure the GPU nodes. We, I'm using the default uh, installation parameters. I'm not passing in anything, so it'll pick the latest driver, for instance. And you see the CRD is corresponding to the GPU operator here and the state of that custom resource for cluster policy. Here are the GPU operator pods being deployed through, by the operator. You will see the pods for the driver installation, for the container toolkit, also see validators to make sure the components are configured properly, and also the DCGM exporter. And it's going to be run in the order that Tariq had mentioned earlier, where you start off with the driver, then the container toolkit, and then the, other, the rest of the components are installed and validated. So it's going from uh, init state to, to running and completed. And then we can check the state of the custom resource as well. And we'd see once all of this is complete that the custom resource shows up as, as ready. This is uh, just a describe of the custom resource. Uh, for cluster policy. It shows things like the driver versions, also shows uh, other uh, states of the uh, GPU operator. And then here I'm doing a describe on the node, and we can see that now the GPU resources are being shown, shown there. And when you uh, you can also port forward the DCGM exporter and look at the metrics. You can see it on a browser, or you could get it with much, much better UI through uh, Grafana dashboards, for instance, and that's especially useful when you have a large fleet of GPU nodes to monitor. This displays a lot of information on GPU health and status. And you can do the classic NVIDIA SMI command through the driver pod. Now we're going to the application state where we're deploying the Kaito workspace CRD. That's, that's deployed now. And then we can see the workspace CRD corresponding to Kaito. And then there's additional config here for the workspace resource where we specify the pre-trained model, which is phi, then we also have the data set that we're going to be using, along with uh, the output of the container registry where we want the fine-tuned model to be pushed to. We're going to be running this on the A100 node. We we'll apply the config. It's going to then create a pod to uh, run the workload. Now it's just pulling the container image. And we can also just see the pod to look at more details. So it's pulling the, uh, the image for the Phi model. And you can also see more status fields uh, for the Kaito workspace. And here are um, some logs corresponding to the, the fine-tuned model, fine-tuning fine -tuning steps. So here you see that it's just started doing fine tuning. And then later on, after a while, you see that the entire fine tuning is completed. And you can see the loss uh, values also being printed for it. And then this can be uploaded to the registry. And then you can use Kaito again for inference. Uh, this demo is showcasing two of these operators together. But you can leverage many other operators for similar workflows as well. And it's quite customizable as needed. So the key takeaways for our presentation are that from an infra provider and cluster admin perspective, it's very complex to manage GPU nodes while providing flexibility to users. Then Kubernetes operators 
are a great way to simplify and automate processes related to, uh, related to your workloads. And then uh, you can automate GPO resource management through the GPO operator. And we also show how operators can be used at the application layer to simplify ML workload management. And then uh, there's multiple layers of the ML deployment stack which can be simplified through the use of corresponding operators. And with this, we hope that you've learned a few new techniques and are encouraged to use operators to simplify your AI infrastructure. Thank you. Now open to questions. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I have one question about GPU operator. Uh, the GPU operator will cover the driver ins installation and does the upgrade, but if the uh, driver pod restart, uh, so everything will reset. Uh, the, the driver will uninstall and reinstall, uh, and the application will be crash. Uh, how about um, this? This thing is very, very important for end user. Okay. Got it. So, y you mean to say that um, you have unintended driver upgrades, which uh, kind of cause your whole uh, re software stack to get reset, and then that kind of crashes your workloads. Yes, yeah, the, work okay. the workload will crash. Yeah, 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 that, that, that's fair. So we have a, a field called uh, wait for completion in the driver upgrade. And what wait for completion does is you can um, use a, sp a specific pod selector. So what that does is, um, we have the Kate's driver manager, which runs as an init container. That will wait till those workloads are complete and only then proceed to um, unload the driver modules and you know, continue on with the driver upgrade. So you can definitely look into using the wait for completion. I'm happy to share more details you know, offline. Oh, okay. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you for this uh, exciting presentation. Uh, I have a question about also uh, mentioned uh, uh, related to the driver installation. Uh, as we know that uh, the uh, NVIDIA uh, operator has a uh, CRD uh, about the uh, driver version, right? Yeah. So uh, we must have a uh, driver installer, uh, the component on the running on the node. So, um, but it's running in the container, right? So. Um, if there are many versions of the OS or kernel versions in the in the cluster, then uh, how can this uh, uh, the driver installer running in the container knows the version of the uh, OS or kernel versions? And because, uh, uh, as we know that so during the uh, driver installation, they have to compile, right? That is correct. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I think one thing to note is that the driver container is a privileged container. So it has visibility into the host. So, and as you mentioned, like one of the installation, one of the steps in the driver installation is building, like compiling and building the kernel modules. So during that step, the GPU uh, container is able to fetch the underlying host's kernel version, and then it downloads the kernel headers accordingly, builds the kernel modules, um, and compiles and builds the kernel modules. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yep. It, uh, de definitely give the driver container a try because as, as, as you run the driver container, you'll you'll see in the logs that uh, the driver container discerns what uh, OS it's running on, like what uh, the kernel version is. It fetches it. Okay, 
Thanks for your presentations. And I have a question here, like, uh, why are you doing the uh, fine-tuning job on the Kubernetes uh, platforms? Uh, I'm, uh, I noticed that you have uh, running the image directly, so I'm not sure, uh, very curious about that. Is that the model and the data set you do the container rest manually for these images? And another <laughs> question is about, uh, we all know that machine learning models have to do some like uh, metadata or version controlling, so how do you uh, handle this or figure this ma machine learning metadata? Thanks. Great questions. So for the, con the container images themselves, so those are containing the foundational models. So in this case, it's the Phi model. That's been containerized beforehand. And there's a set of common uh, popular foundational models that have been containerized already. But then you, it's also customizable to add your own, own ones. The data set is specified by the user in the config. So there is a spec in the fine tuning spec, there's a field to add your data set which can either just be the URL of the data set, but it has to be formatted in a particular way, which is uh, consumable, or it could be containerized. And the Kaito documentation also talks about like how to do it, so you could containerize the data set. And then, so that's the first question. I think the second question is around management of the data sets and models, right, for different versions. I think that part is, uh, there's different ways to do it, right? You could have it as container images, you could have it as ORAs, like artifacts, for instance. I think here it's uh, more focused on a common set of foundational models. So we haven't looked into the, uh, the cases where you need to manage a ton of different models, but the container registry itself is like one option to do it. And even uh, the registry here, typically, and most cloud providers are supporting ORAS artifacts, and that's one good way to manage multiple versions. And you can kind of combine that with uh, Kaito and the other operators to, to make it work. Yeah, thanks, thanks for your answers. And I have a following uh, mm -hmm. thing here. It's like uh, we have a recent Kubernetes of new features that we could mount the, uh, uh, mount the images as a volume. Uh, directly into the uh, containers already. So uh, maybe in the future, so we could mount it, both the data set and the model itself as the images. And uh, as all you know that the, for the model registries, we have uh, many capabilities to do uh, the uh, ver versioning or the security checkings. For, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks. That's and my thinking. Yeah, that's, that's actually something we are looking into as well. Uh, so one, Part of that is also related to pod start times, which is uh, we want to be able to make sure the pods start uh, fast, and uh, sometimes that can be a helpful approach. Um, the other approach for that, a bit of a sidetrack, but is to use lazy image loading uh, for that, and uh, you know that's something that we support in uh, in AKS. But that's uh, one way to address like one of the underlying problems for for using it. But we are looking into supporting uh, more of this. Native yeah. mounts. So. Yeah. Thanks for your answers. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah. There's one more question there. Okay. Uh, thank you. My question is about the RDMA part, because RDMA is mm -hmm. uh, very important in AI workloads. So, does Nvidia has any plan about providing an uh, RDMA operator, which can manage Massive RDMA mix. Sure, yeah, there, there does exist an operator called a network operator. Um, so you can go to github.com slash melanox slash network operator and you'll find, yeah, yeah you have people using um, the network operator f uh, to, to achieve the, the very pro you know, uh, solution that you mentioned. Uh, how about the NVLink part about the GPU? Does it provide in the uh, GPU operator? So, um, one, one, one thing to note is that there is a setting in the cluster policy where you can enable RDMA. And what that does is it loads the NVPRMEM module that is packaged into the driver container. That is uh, in turn leveraged by the network, op uh, network operator. Uh, you know, and so when you want to run your nickel tests, you know, you can have your network operator and your GPU operator running together, and you have 
uh, pods that are able to request G um, GPUs and Mellanox Nexus resources. Okay, thanks. So yeah, so the network operator basically run, is created in the same way as, and runs the same, much like the GPU operator. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think we're done with time. So thank you all for your questions and for your time.